Hey guys, got a package here from StoneAgeGamer.com. Sort of uh, know what it already is, and actually I've already opened it, so I uh, can't act too surprised. This is the Gopher system, which I ordered off them, so I was expecting this. However, I was not expecting this. This is pretty cool. Um, as those of you who who know, I ordered the um, the EverDrive uh, pretty much right when it came out. And uh, when it came out, it kind of came with this really plain white label. And uh, shortly afterwards, with his next batch, he made these really nice color labels and a, a nice color case uh, to hold it in. Once again, I'm going to give a big shout out to StoneAgeGamer.com if you guys haven't checked them out yet. You're going to want to check them out now because not only does he have Super EverDrives now, Super NES carts with an SD card slot on it, uh, he's also carrying a lot more real consoles, so if you want to pick up a Genesis or a NES, uh, he's got consoles with games and controllers, all refurbished and cleaned up. Uh, so, even better than ever, StoneAgeGamer.com. <laughs> and now that I've done my little plug, we'll take a look at the Gopher. Um, as some of you may know, I picked up the Gen Mobile when it came out, and... Uh, Around the time I was looking at this, I was actually aware of the Gopher. The Gopher, for the longest time, though, was only available in Europe. And it was really hard to find any uh, one that would sell it and ship it to North America. But now Stone Age Gamers got them, so I wanted to check this thing out. These are $44.99. And uh, the main difference on paper is that... The Gen Mobile and the Retro Gen take real cartridges. They have a cartridge slot on them. This one takes SD cards. Uh, first of all, what it comes with is your standard uh, composite AV cable, so you can hook it up to a TV if you wish. Once again, with the Gen Mobile, you can do the same thing, but I ask why would you when you can have the real thing get much better uh, sound and use real controllers. But anyways, yeah, they're there. You can hook this thing up to a TV if you want. Uh, there's the USB cable to charge the battery. Like the Gen Mobile, it's got a built-in rechargeable battery. The Gen Mobile comes with a plug that you plug into the wall. It still goes to 5 volt USB, but you have the wall plug. And on this one, you just get a USB cable. Obviously, it's much smaller. First thing you're going to notice, because it doesn't have a cartridge slot on it, it's much thinner. Same basic button layout. You have the D-pad with the reset button up top. You have six buttons on the right with the start button on top. On the top of the machine we have uh, a light for power. We have the USB. Uh, we have the AV out. We have the SD card slot. The volume knob. On the bottom we have the headphone jack. And we have the power switch. And actually, just below the six buttons, there is a red light here that says low battery on it. When I got this thing in my hands, the second thing I noticed is that it does feel a little bit better built. Okay? This feels a little bit big and clunky. It feels like there's a lot of hollow space inside. You know, it's a little bit flexible in the back. Um, it has this extra switch on it, which does nothing, which just kind of makes you wonder, you know what were they thinking when they built this thing. This one feels really tight, really well built. There's no flex in it at all. Um, the plastics feel nice. The plastics feel a little bit softer, the buttons feel a little bit softer, and that leads to the second thing, is the buttons themselves. Um, on this one, I never really liked the D-pad, because it's all separated like a PlayStation controller, but when you start to use it, you realize the left and up uh, piece is one piece of plastic and the bottom and right uh, buttons are a separate piece of plastic which is, is just kinda weird and it's kinda hard to use uh, this while you're playing a game and on the other side the buttons are incredibly stiff they're really flat and they have sharp corners on it so the buttons aren't very comfortable on this one we have a proper d-pad one piece d-pad it kind of rocks, like it feels like it's pivoting in the middle a little bit. And the buttons on the right side 
are much softer to the feel. They're rounded. They're not uh, sharp corners. And the buttons themselves are much, much smoother. They're not uh, nearly as stiff. Uh, so the build quality and the buttons actually feel better. It's got a bigger screen. Isn't that nice? This is a 2.4 inch screen. This is a 2.8 inch screen. It doesn't sound like much, but, well, clearly there is quite a difference there in terms of the size of the screen. This one has a huge border around the screen. This one, the screen goes right up closer to the edges, so that's pretty cool. But not only is the screen bigger, it's also much brighter. And not only is the screen much brighter, but it also has a much better viewing angle. Turn off the light here. The viewing angle on this screen is so good that as long as you can see the screen, you can see the screen. If you know what I mean. <laughs> and side by side, at the same angle, it's very clear that this is a better screen. It's brighter and it has a better viewing angle. Now, it has 20 games built in, and it's actually the same 20 games that you get on the Gen Mobile. So, two pages worth, 10 on each page, and they're all the same games. So, it has 20 games built in. But, of course, the main purpose of this is the ability to use your SD card. Um, so this is the same SD card that I use in my EverDrive, has all my Genesis games loaded on it. I was hoping that I would be able to put this in here and go. Unfortunately, you have to have the games in a directory called Game. Whereas on the EverDrive, it doesn't care. It doesn't matter what directories the games are in or if they're in directories at all. On here, you have to have them in a directory called Game. So just one thing to keep in mind. And we'll put the SD card in there. And we'll go to the third page. And the third page gives us an option for SD card. So we hit start on that. And now it loads up a new menu. So this is the SD card and all the games on the SD card. So as you can see now, we have 14 pages of games. I'm not sure what the limit is to how many games this thing can have in the directory or how many games it can have on the SD card, but if uh, two gig, if it can use the full 2 gig limit like the EverDrive, then of course you're going to be able to fit every Genesis game ever made. So we load up the game, and as you can see it has to flash into ROM or RAM, I'm not sure exactly how it works, but when the games are coming off the SD card there is a bit of a loading time there. Uh, but of course once it gets going, it's uh, just the same as if uh, the game was on the cartridge, on the, on the Gen Mobile. So like I said, I like, oh, <laughs> I like the controls a lot better on this one. I think the D-pad is a hell of a lot more responsive and a lot easier to use. It's so much easier on the thumb, and the buttons work a lot better too. Because the system's thinner, you can also hold it more ways that you want. Uh, whereas the other one, you kind of have to get your fingers around the, uh, the cartridge slot. Uh, so I think this one's a lot more comfortable to hold. The buttons work a lot better. The D-pad is a lot nicer. The screen's bigger and nicer, as I've mentioned. Um, I've also heard that this one has less slowdown um, than... The, uh, the RetroGen. Um, they run the same software. They run the same software emulation, as I mentioned. Um, so it may just be that this has a faster processor on it. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but uh, this one will have no extra slowdown, so the games will pretty much run as they run on the Genesis. You know, When Sonic gets hit by rings and there's a little bit of slowdown on real hardware, that's going to be in here. Uh, but there won't be any extra slowdown beyond, beyond that, so... Um, I haven't had time to test that, but that's what I've heard. 
Uh, so if that's true, that's really just a bonus. So, as you might expect, they have the same sound. Which is to say, they have the same crappy sound that most Genesis clone systems have. But once again, on a handheld, coming out of a little chintzy speaker that you're not going to want to turn up very loud anyways, I don't always consider that to be such a big deal. Once again, if it's a system you're going to play on a TV, that's a different story. But on a little chintzy speaker that you're not going to turn up very loud anyways, you can at least hear what's going on. It'd be nice if they fixed the sound, but it has the same sound you've come to expect with these at games firecore emulation machines. Other than that, there's not really a lot to say. I mean, I think I've pretty much covered it all here. The system feels really well built, the controls feel better, the screen's bigger, the screen's brighter, and it has a better viewing angle. It's actually a really good little system. And unfortunately, had I know then what I know now, I wouldn't have bought the Gen Mobile. I do like the idea of using real cartridges, but in all honesty, it's not very efficient to have these cartridges going around with you if you're on the go, and that's the whole point of this system. Being able to fit all your Genesis games on an SD card and put that inside the system is certainly much more convenient for most people. So overall, I would say check out the Gopher. For $44.99, StoneAgeGamer.com, you can't go wrong. It's a great little system, and it's a lot better than the Gen Mobile. I'm sorry, it really is. And, uh, I, I mean, I realize a lot of people have probably bought this because I told them to buy this. But that's how it goes. When the Gen Mobile and Retro, Retro Gen came out, a lot of people liked it because it took real cartridges, and this was not out in North America yet. And like I said... Now that it's out in North America, for about the same price, I'm going to go with the gopher.